for the 20 blue. Mm. Right. <laughs> so we're trying to get our other device going. Okay. You want to push this back now? You're going to be typing. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with that. It's saying we can't tag people. All right, people. So welcome to another Saturday, and thank you for giving us just a little bit of your time. We're going to be talking to you today, talking to you today, excuse me, getting tongue tied, about the gift of prayer. And so we will be uh, speaking upon that. Now, one thing I do want to do that I that we haven't done is that um, I guess from now on we'll just make sure that we open in prayer. Uh, we know we, we talk about some things, but we never open in prayer. So that's something that once you get our hands away from that coffee, we can do. So can you hand, baby? All right. All right. And so, um, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to be uh, connecting with other believers. We thank you, Father God, that we will have an opportunity to just learn and grow and collaborate with other people that believe in your word and that believe that marriage is between a man and a woman. Lord, we thank you for your blessings upon our families, Father. We thank you for your blessings upon our finances, our health, our dreams, goals, and aspirations. Lord, we're not trying to shine any light upon myself or Millicent. The only thing we want to do, Father God, is help families grow in the knowledge of you, use the word of God, the strategies and the tools and everything that Jesus used as an example, all the disciples, all of the different writings and teachings in the Bible <laughs> to help us be better. Better sons to you, better daughters to you, better husbands and wives to each other, better parents to our children, and better leaders in the workplace. We thank you for a great and outstanding day. I pray for the safety of all that are viewing us today. I pray for the safety of our own children, Father God, and the things that they may do today. And Lord, we just give your name all the praise, glory, and honor. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to be talking about the gift of prayer. Okay. And so Good morning. you can. And Sherry, Tabitha, Miss Charlie. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Yes. So I want you to, to one, I just want you to take a breath. Take a breath. Inhale. Exhale. It's okay to do that. It's actually, you know, a good thing. Inhale again. Exhale. She over there sniffing coffee. <laughs> Inhale one more time. Steady sniffing coffee. Exhale. Breathing is good because that's one of the things that we want to um, just share with you that we want you to do um, to Make sure that you're getting oxygen to your brain, especially when you're having a disagreement with somebody, whether it's your husband or co-worker or whatever. Breathe. Get oxygen to your brain. Mm -hmm. Think. And then respond. Yes. So we don't want you to just fly off the cuff. I'm going <laughs> to give them what they deserve. I'm gonna give a piece of I'm gonna give them a piece of my mind and everything else in between. I'm gonna say words to them that I know they'll understand, <laughs> but they may not be godly. So we want you to focus and think about what you're gonna say. Focus. So prayer, and this is a uh, this is a dictionary version of it. Mm -hmm. It says a solemn request for help. Or expression of thanks addressed to God. And I'm not going to say anything else. Is it or an object of worship? Mm -mm. I'll stop at God. A solemn request for help or expression of thanks addressed to God. Mm -hmm. So, and then it also says a religious service, especially a regular one, which people gather in order to pray together. So my 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 focus today <clears throat> is to shed some light on things that you already do. Mm 
Mm -hmm. The only thing that I want to push upon you or push on you to do is that, or we want to push upon you to do is that we want you to think about different areas. Because I think some people get overwhelmed because they feel like they got to pray about everything all in that one day. You don't have to do that. One thing at a time. You can pray for your family on Monday. You can pray for your job situation on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. You can pray for finances on Wednesday. Right. You can pray for doors opening or closing for Thursday. Mm -hmm. You can pray for your neighbors on Friday. You can pray for your church members or whatever on Saturday. And you can be praying for your pastor Monday through Sunday. You know, you know, you can be praying for world leaders. So you have uh, some things that you can do. So I don't want to. I don't want people to think that, wow, man, I can't say all these different prayers and all, just divide it up. Because you don't have to do everything all in one day. Right. So I want you to type into the chat, <clears throat> why is it important to pray? Why is it important to pray? And that's on Instagram, too. Why Instagram, I want to see some love. So... Why is it important to pray? What's the purpose? I just wrote a definition, but I want to know for you, because you all are not robots and neither are we. Why is it important to pray? What's the purpose of it? What should you gain from it? What should you what what should you get out of it? So I'm waiting. I'm exercising wait time. And while I'm waiting, I'm gonna get some of this good coffee because it got some cinnamon in it. <laughs> and Tabitha, your dad taught me that. I don't have the cinnamon sticks, but he taught me how to put that cinnamon in the coffee. So, thank you, Mr. Mickey. To keep connection to God. Absolutely. Connection. We're going to stick on that word. Connection. That's a very strong word. It's a loaded word. So, but being <clears throat> connected to God means letting him know that I can't do this thing called life without you. Among other things. That's a, that's a great observation. Among other things. I mean, Sherry said to let God know I'm listening to him. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Oh, man, we got some great answers. <clears throat> Tabitha said to be connected. All right, Miss Charlie said that love relationship with God. That relationship is like no other. And it's something that's um, it's like a house. It has to be built, mm -hmm. maintained, you know. Right. Boy, y'all got some, y'all opening up some doors for me. And so, I'm going to go back when they share and said, yeah. let, let God know I'm listening to him. That's also letting him know that whatever it is you have for me to do, I'm available. Amen. And if I'm afraid about it and I'm not sure about it, then mm -hmm. I know you're going to equip me with the tools to get it done. Because that's what you want for me to do. Exactly. So... <clears throat> The first comment was to be connected to God. Mm -hmm. I think Tabitha said that. Mm -hmm. Then Aunt Sherry said to let God know I'm listening to him. Right. And then Miss Charlie said that love relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the connection, that is a foundational piece because you can't get connected to somebody you don't try to communicate with. So the the practice of prayer is not so that you can say eloquent words. The practice of prayer is that you are building a relationship with God that has nothing to do with really anybody else. It's to know that throughout the day, he can count on listening to you because he knows you're looking for him. That's a big deal. Right. You are looking for him. Now, you can choose whatever time... You want to as far as when you pray. I ain't, I ain't got no you know specific time. But when you are connecting with God, as Tabitha said, to be connected, mm -hmm. you're looking for him. And, you know, that just puts me in the mindset, too, of if I'm, you know, busy doing something or whatever the case may be. And our kids come to us and say, hey, I need to talk to you. Uh -huh. They know that everything with me stops. Yeah. Whatever I'm doing stops because my child said that they need to talk to me. You got my undivided attention. So just think and imagine that that's how God does us. Daddy, I need to talk to you. He listened. 
He, yeah, you, you, you have his undivided attention. And yeah. a lot of times we think, you know, that we've done so much bad or whatever mm. that he don't have time to listen to us. Well, the same thing again, going back to the kids. We're not going to turn them away. Yeah. They can get in trouble. But if my child say, I need to talk to you, everything stops. What is it? What you need? What's going on? Mm-hmm. Excellent. And so that's a that's a great that's a great connection to what um, what Tabitha said, and is also a connection to what Aunt Sherry said about to let God know I'm listening. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times we're so busy talking and trying to tell God stuff in the prayer, right. there has to be a time when you need to pause <clears throat> and listen. Mm-hmm. There is a time when you need to wait. Because if you want to hear something, you got to stop talking. So, because um, the very thing we may be complaining about, <clears throat> fussing about, and going off about, he may be trying to talk to us and give us instructions on how to handle that very thing. But we so caught up and busy in our emotions mm-hmm. and be frustrated that we're not listening to what he has to say. So it's an open dialogue. We don't want to be just the ones talking, but we do need to listen I do like that what Miss Charlie said about the love because it's a relationship mm-hmm. and it just it, he already loves you right. he already loves me but how are we displaying authentic love to God so tap the said oh, wow. okay mm-hmm. she said I pray all the time randomly throughout the day I get prayer requests through email constantly throughout the day from my church. Anytime I read them, I immediately say a prayer for that specific prayer request. I try to do I try to do that so I do not forget. Yeah, mm-hmm. because you know days can go, the day can get like the day gets. <clears throat> yes. And your heart, you want to do it, but because you're addressing it in the now, mm-hmm. it's a good practice. And uh, it just like it's like building up your heart muscle. If you run or you exercise, you don't get as tired. So you're building up your prayer muscle. Is that you feel naked or you feel isolated mm-hmm. when you don't talk to God at all? Praying over your food is prayer. Praying for a safe trip to get to your destination is prayer. Mm-hmm. Praying for somebody that you heard in a line at a store. Even though they didn't know, and you just said a prayer right then, that is a prayer. Right. Praying for somebody that cuts you off when they're driving crazy, running lights, mm-hmm. that's a prayer. Yeah, praying for their safety. And praying for the safety of others. Right. Because they're being foolish and negligent, and it can easily cause somebody to lose their life. Mm-hmm. So instead of getting upset like we do, Lord, I ask you to bless them with a safe trip to their destination, even though they're making bad decisions. Mm -hmm. Protect them from themselves and protect them from somebody else. So it's important that we focus on making sure that we understand Mm -hmm. that God is right there. He is in the midst of everything that we're doing. It is it it is a wonderful feeling to be having reciprocal conversation, and when he does tell you something, and you know mm-hmm. that it's something that you really been trusting and believing him for, it's it's almost like a a fulfillment. Right. You know that wow, God, you out of all the billions of people in this world, <clears throat> you saw fit to answer a prayer from me. You know, it's not that you ever want to be a person that's conceited or stuck up, but you worth it. God wouldn't have created you if you wasn't worth anything. He don't create junk. So when we pray, we are building a relationship with God. When we pray, Mm -hmm. we are extending our heart past some walls. Right. Because sometimes when you pray, you're praying out of a place of pain. You're praying out of a place of betrayal. Mm-hmm. You're praying out of a place of hurt. Um, you're praying out of a place of fear. You know, and, and, and I don't, want, don't sit up here and act like you ain't never been scared. 
you praying and believing and trusting God for something, but you still have that fear that it may not happen. That's a normal fear. Right. But God says that you must have faith. Faith is the faith is the substance of those things hoped for, the evidence of those things not seen. Mm-hmm. So if you have the faith to sit in a chair, no matter what your weight is, then you should have faith to be able to pray and believe and trust God that He's going to supply your need according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Wow. So we we're gonna um, you want to read it now, or we got some other things we want to cover. Um, no, we can go ahead and read it now. So, this, I think this is going to bring up some other things. All right. You know, uh, some other behaviors that, that we should make sure that we're putting into practice if we're not already. Okay. Um, the gift of prayer <clears throat> is a title for today, and we're still in our Mystery and Mrs. devotional book. Okay. It's good. It's um, good too. This is an awesome read. So that's why we use it quite a bit. Um it's not just fluff. It's not just words for a devotional. Mm. This is real life stuff that we deal with every day. So if we weren't taught or raised how to deal with certain things, mm-hmm. you know, you got to have a guide. Yes. You know, if you don't have that circle of female friends or that circle of male friends, mm-hmm. or again, if you wasn't reared in that way, Get yourself around some some God fear men and women, you know that you you see their life is trying to follow their path of God, you know, and then then follow that. Ask for advice, ask questions, because if somebody really want to see you prosper in the things of God, mm-hmm. they're not gonna leave you out there by yourself. Amen. Okay. I don't know why I said that, but okay. <laughs> Maybe somebody needed it. I don't know. Um, this says, you know your loved one better than anyone else. You are in- intimately acquainted with their likes and dislikes, hopes and fears, friends and enemies. You know their stress, their aches and pains, their disappointments. You're the keeper of their secrets, the lover of their heart. You know more than anyone else how to pray for their life. Love each other by praying every day. Ask God to heal your pain and sickness. Ask for for strength to keep up with life's demands. Ask Him to prosper your work and guard your reputation. Mm -hmm. Ask Him to keep your marriage close and connected. Call on him for wisdom to handle tough decisions and pray for discernment to understand the Bible and live by its truths. Cry out for courage and rescue when the enemy attacks your faith and family. Mm -hmm. Invite God's love and power into each other's lives. Your faith will grow as you see him move in your home. You'll be secure knowing you're in his hands and the spirit will make you one as you lift each other up. You want to read the prayer? The prayer for today says, Lord, make us faithful to prayer, to pray for each other Mm -hmm. about everything and bring your wisdom, help, and blessings as we pray. Amen. So last week we we ended by talking about, you know, as the two become one flesh. Mm-hmm. And you're becoming one flesh every day. Every day. The miracle took place in the marriage vows according to God. But as an analogy of just saying that you're becoming one every day is because it requires work. Mm-hmm. So, um, one of the first things it says was about you knowing your spouse better than anyone. We know that that, that should be true. Mm-hmm. No matter what, and yeah, the parents know the kids, all that stuff. But you have taken up that mantle and both of and both of your you and your spouse have now left the nest to cleave to each other. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that it says here, it says that you're intimately acquainted with their likes and dislikes. You should know what your spouse like, you should know what they dislike. You should be able to pray mm-hmm. in that area. 
Not that you're trying to walk on eggshells. That's not what we're saying. You're supposed to intimately and be connected to your spouse and know those things. Mm -hmm. um, it says hopes and fears, friends and enemies. I want to talk about the hopes and fears piece. Okay. Because as a spouse, even if you don't know other things, you should, you should have some kind of understanding about the hopes of your spouse mm -hmm. and the fears that may stop them or make them stumble at trying to accomplish those hopes. You should know mm -hmm. to pray and ask God for strength in those areas because you see the greatness and you see all of the potential. You saw it even before you got married right. of what your spouse can do and how far they can go. But God chose you for him and him for you. So those are some areas where you can pray for your spouse. And you should trust and believe God that in your prayer, in your exercising of your faith, in your patience, mm -hmm. that you begin to see the prayers of yourself as it's for your spouse to manifest. Right. Well, we talked about this a long time ago. And we know that we want to pray for each other. But if both of us are doing it, that means that when she's praying for me for the areas of strength, for the areas of opportunity to grow, mm -hmm. and I'm doing the same thing for her, right. then we should be growing. <clears throat> it should be a manifestation of that growth in the home. That should happen. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing, though, we have to make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure. We all go through things, whether it's with spouse, kids, or with work. But we have to make sure that we don't get so busy and wrapped up in our own stuff yeah. that we're not listening to our spouse. Because mm -hmm. they may just say something offhandedly. You may take it that way, <clears throat> but it may really be bothering you. Mm -hmm. Stop and pray about that. Yeah. I pray for a lot of stuff that he tells me. I'm listening. He knows that I'm listening. Mm -hmm. But in his mind, it may not be something that he really think is a pray about. But me knowing him and the way he operates as far as work or whatever, mm -hmm. I know when something is really bothering him, even if he don't portray it in that way. So what am I going to do about it? As he's having his back, being his spouse, I'm going mm -hmm. to pray about that. And so a lot of time I don't even tell him. Mm -hmm. I just wait till he come back with a report yeah. and say, hey, you know that thing that we talked about? Well, this mm -hmm. is what happened. Thank you, God. Amen. And so it's so much that <clears throat> we can focus on, but I think that that's a big deal. Hopes and fears. Mm -hmm. If you know that your spouse has a fear of whatever, you really need to go to go before God for that. Right. If you're speaking in front of people, if it's actually, you know, going and taking that next step to do something and they feel like they just don't have the strength to do it or they're so afraid of rejection, mm -hmm. you pray You pray God's covering over them. Right. He, he gave them a brain. He gave them talent. Each one of you all that's listening, you have a talent and you have strength. Your spouse has talent and strength. Mm -hmm. There are always going to be areas of opportunity. And if you feel like those areas of opportunity, which could be fear, is holding your spouse back, it is your job, duty, and responsibility to go before God on their behalf because you're supposed right. to be having their back and you pray for them. Same thing with your children. Same thing with anything. Mm -hmm. There are so many areas that we can apply prayer to. But the main thing is um, don't go in wanting something other than, Lord, I want to connect with you today. And then once you connect with God, which, you know, Lord, I appreciate you. Lord, I thank you. Or you sing a song. Mm -hmm. You do something to let God know how important he is to you and not about all the things that you need and you want. Right. Because that's kind of selfish. Uh, going before God and letting him know how much you appreciate the fact that you got a home and some people don't. That you got a place to go to work. That you have a means by which to pay for bills and get food and gas. Those are some things to let God know how much you appreciate. 
And Lord, even though my children may not be where they need to be in life, mm -hmm. I thank you that you give them new mercies every day. Mm -hmm. I thank you that you give them favor in their workplace, Lord. And just help me as a parent, mm -hmm. as a coach, to train them up. Right. And Lord, while they experience and coaching from me, don't let me be reserved from not learning from our children. Because mm -hmm. I think I find, and I, I can speak to that, you can't, don't be upset or disappointed if your child come up with an idea that's really strong just because you didn't do it. Right. Celebrate that. Let them know that you uh, appreciate their thinking in something. Mm -hmm. Because that builds a good relationship too. So I don't know why, well, I don't know why I said that. But I just want you to know that as you pray, you have so many things to really put into the basket about what you want to cover. So now I just want you to think about, you know, how to kind of get organized with what you want to cover each day. Because it don't have to be, some things you can just say, Lord, I, I really want to cover these things every day. Mm -hmm. But other things, you know, it could be that you want to hit it on different days. But I really love the fact that it's also talking about you're the keeper of their secrets, the lover of their heart. Mm -hmm. You know them more than anyone. You know, it says you know more than anyone else how to pray for their life. Right. And since you know your spouse in such an intimate way, then definitely you want to go and lift them up in prayer. You want to head you. <clears throat> you want to pray for a hedge of protection mm -hmm. over them, for the things they see, and for the things that they don't see. <clears throat> you pray a hedge of protection over them. So I had a question, and I I need some <clears throat> people to give me some answers here. How many people have been upset with their spouse? Yeah. But knew that their spouse was going through some things <clears throat> at work. And you put being upset with them aside and still pray for your spouse. I wait. They, they didn't hear you. you might they didn't hear me? No, I need to say it again? Mm -hmm. say that again. How many people have been upset with their spouse? Their spouse is dealing with some things at work. And you know this. But you're able to put your being upset with them to the side and still pray for them to have victory in that area or pray for God to open doors for them in that area. Mm -hmm. or, did, wait. or you just didn't. Or you just did because you was upset with them. Mm -hmm. You just said, no, I'm not going to do it. We're going to wait. Exercise and wait time. Sip on my coffee. All right. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Terry said, Cousin Terry said, I have. And Sherry said, okay. Yeah. So, so, and Sherry, with what you said, um, that can be stress. Know that, know, you know that stress. And that can be stress. Mm -hmm. So, how are you praying and uplifting him in that area? Mm -hmm. You know, God, I know this is the situation, but I'm asking you to take that stress off my husband. Give him a different vision or a different avenue to enjoy life and to enjoy your peace. Okay. Jeannie said, I try to make prayer the first go-to. Okay. So, because, I mean... We make mistakes, ladies. I'm speaking from a from 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 my husband part. <clears throat> you make mistakes, and depending on the type of job that you have, you either have employees or you're working with them. Either way, you know, most of us are not in some small think tank where it's only two or three of us or five of us. Most of us work in a larger place, and so we don't always deal with stress the best way we can and we don't always come home with the best type of attitude um and so my 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 prayer is that you know one i try not to bring that stuff into the house sometimes it spills over not to the point where i'm being angry with somebody it's just that 
there are times when I just got to get it off my chest and that ain't always in the car. So we do some things that help us to get things off our chest. So if I come on and I hug her and I don't say a word, then she know it's been a bad one. Not a, not a, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, uh, it was, it wasn't a, it was a bad day. It was not a, well, you know, you can get past this type of thing. You know, it's going to be all right. And we went with no kind of days. Mm-hmm. When I come home and hug her and don't say anything, it was bad. But the thing is, it is no worries. If you didn't pray, don't don't beat yourself up over it. Mm-hmm. Now it's just yeah. to have a stronger lens about compassion, right. empathy, and understanding. Because if the expectation is for your husband to do the same for you, mm-hmm. and when you have the opportunity to do it for him and you don't, then don't expect to be don't expect for it to be reciprocated. But again, hear what he said. Mm-hmm. If you didn't do it, don't beat yourself up about it. Mm-hmm. Just do it moving forward. Mm-hmm. Just do it moving forward. Yeah, that's that's I, I think that's one of the things that we do too much. We don't do right, we make a mistake, and then we sit in the in the foolishness that the devil wants us to just sit there and wallow in that. Yeah. You don't have to do that. <laughs> Lord, I ask you to forgive me. I repent. Help me mm-hmm. to not make this same mistake. Give mm-hmm. me the strength to, to 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 not do the same exact response. Help me in that area. And then then like I said, before you say something, if you feel like it's um really weighing on you, breathe before you do something. Okay. All right, and All right. Amen to that. Yes. And so, again, so I will say this. Whatever is done, celebrate the small things. Mm-hmm. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. I appreciate you doing that. I was going to get around to it, but you did it even before I could get to it. Thank right. you. Right. Because anything that you can do to build up your spouse, mm-hmm. do it. I've been practicing thank you, thank you, and thank you. Not because of that. It's because you need to pay attention to the small things. Right. Not let that be something that you take for granted. Mm-hmm. I do it now, but it was back in the day. Okay. But it also has gotten better not okay. to take it. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right, then. Good, good. So, but you know what, Tabitha? Just like Melissa said before, and I've said it too, you know, you know, if you know the stress of your, your your spouse's job, you begin to to pray over the atmosphere before they even get there. Yeah, exactly. That the, that the atmosphere in the car That's good. is conducive for them as they go on to work. That they don't even get stressed out because of of of, of people driving crazy. Mm-hmm. That the atmosphere when they get there, because you never know what they're gonna face when they get there anyway. So the atmosphere when they get there, mm-hmm. Lord, let it be right. And no matter what it is, Father God, my husband is equipped with everything he needs to be able to be successful for the day. Mm-hmm. I take authority over the enemy. He will not bring strife into my husband's heart. He will not bring fear and doubt mm-hmm. into his mind. And then boom. Yes. And it's just the same thing. So if he's on his way home, you do the same thing. You pray that that atmosphere when he come home. Mm-hmm. It's nice and, and all of that good stuff. And that hey. He can come on to a, a place of peace. Yes. A place of peace. And I know that can be difficult because on the on the on the on the other side of that, when we talk about difficult conversations, mm-hmm. a place of peace might not be a place of peace for them when it's something that needs to be discussed and we talked about don't sweep it under the rug. Right. But it's still when we're talking about the atmosphere, we really wanted to be conducive for that. Mm-hmm. And God, through prayer and building a relationship with him, will let right. you know, hey, this is the time to engage him. This right. is the time to engage her. Don't engage her right now. Mm-hmm. It ain't going to work. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. Then, boom, fireworks go off. Yep. Pyrotechnics in the house. And, then and one thing to... I learned about that mm-hmm. is make an appointment. Make an appointment with your spouse. You know, if it's if it's a tough topic, you know that has to be discussed. Just hit done. Um, okay. then make an appointment. You know, mm. it's like 
Because then when you do that, you give giving respect to your spouse's time. Mm-hmm. That gives you a chance to whatever that is, get out of your feelings and think about the real issue at hand mm-hmm. where you're operating in fact and you're not operating in feelings. All right. And it's hard to do that. But that's why you, that's what the whole prayer thing is about. Mm-hmm. Lord, if I'm connected to you, because Tabitha talked about being connected. Lord, if I love you, because Miss um, Charlie said about the love, mm-hmm. you know, and Sherry, she spoke about, what did what, what she say? I'm trying to remember. About us letting God know that we that's hear right. him. That's yeah, right, that we hear him and that we're listening. Mm-hmm. Then he may tell you how to engage. He right, may tell exactly. you that, you know what? Um... And Sherry, he may say, he may say, daughter, I need you to pray for your husband in this, and it's gonna take a little time. Mm-hmm. So I want you to make sure that you put in time, like a couple of weeks. It's 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 it's, it's really weighing on him. Mm-hmm. I got to work on it, but his mind's so preoccupied, he needs somebody else that's in the game, right, to pray for him. Because mm-hmm. some things don't just like the one prayer thing. Sometimes that ain't it, right? You know, <clears throat> and it's not like you're trying to be some some broken record and say, God, please, 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 God. It's not that, but it's more of you just some 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 areas are like you just gotta sit on, right? Because it ain't gonna happen overnight, because you didn't get there like that overnight, okay? So I um, am very pleased or happy about you know like you all typing in the chat. Because this is something, you, when we talk about build that prayer muscle, mm-hmm. build that prayer muscle, you know, over the small things. Right. Over the small things. Okay. So it talked about where are we going now. Ask for strength to keep up with life's demands. Ask him to prosper your work and guard your reputation. Your rep, ooh, your reputation is, is everything. Mm-hmm. Not because... You hanging with the Joneses or the people with money, but your reputation is everything. Is everything, and I don't care where you are in life right now. If you got a good reputation or a bad one, I really don't care. What I want you to focus on is if you feel like you can be better, then you ask God to help me be better in those areas. Mm-hmm. Because when you are doing and living the right thing. When people, well, let me just go back. When the devil tries to attack your integrity, mm-hmm. <clears throat> the truth that you live will always defend itself. And those people that try to attack you won't have anything to really stand on because they have no proof. Just like when they accused Jesus, the people were standing up there wanting him to die, mm-hmm. but they had no proof. So he stood there un condemnable okay. oh wait a minute so okay so like um one a repeated prayer is not denial mm-hmm. if you don't get an answer in your scope of time I would say that as you pray for whatever you trust in God in, Mm -hmm. pray that you don't allow doubt to set in. Mm -hmm. Because that is a barrier that does not build faith. And God said, without faith, it's impossible to please me. So I don't want you to think that you need to take something back. Mm-hmm. That's that's not that's not a good practice. So and and Tabitha spoke to that too. Uh-huh. And what I want to say is, instead of repeating that prayer, mm-hmm. that prayer that you said at first, and then I always hear Pastor Mike's voice in my head. Speak those things that be not as though they are. Mm-hmm. God told us, speak those things that be not as though they are. So when you say, when you pray that initial prayer, the next time, God, I thank you for bringing it to us. It, I thank you for bringing it into existence. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'll just use a house, for example. When we first came and looked at this house, mm-hmm. 
you know, <laughs> our family was growing. We, I mean, we were, we could have made it in the house that we were in, but it was tight. We moved in that house, it was four, we moved out, it was six. It was time to go, mm-hmm. it just wasn't room. But when we came and looked at this house, we prayed over the house. Mm-hmm. Every prayer after that, God, I thank you for this. We thank you for our new home. We thank you for, you know, blah, 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 whatever mm-hmm. it was. So we didn't repeat the prayer. We just thanked him for it already happening. But let me say this. When we first got here and we went and walked everything and the people showed us, I went to her and said, I don't think we can do this. Because this, this, this is way yeah. too, this is way past, uh, we, we can't, I don't know. You know, and so we had to, I don't even, I think we even, when we was getting ready to leave, actually, when we was getting ready to leave, the people that was like wanting to sell the house, they actually prayed with us because they saw that I was not in a place <laughs> of yeah. acceptance or belief yeah. that this would be our resting place. Mm-hmm. But that's what Milton had told me, you know. She was like, this is going to be our resting place. And I'm mm-hmm. like, ooh. <laughs> I was like, ooh, yeah. we need to think about the rest and finances. Because yeah. we got a lot of issues. So, but they prayed with us. And we just sat on the word. And we didn't doubt anything. We just walked through the process. So as you pray and trust God and believe, just like Mr. says, you know, speaking those things that be not as though they were. Mm-hmm. Believing that. And going back to this, I share the prayer, you're not alone, right? The Bible says there were two or more gathered in my name, there I'm in the midst. Right. So you have God that has the faith in his own word. You have Jesus, your elder brother, that has the faith in the word that was sent from God. You have the Holy Spirit that's supposed to be with you. Mm-hmm. So we can't break the, the cycle of of truth right. with the doubt. That's all. And so and, and I don't care if anybody has had doubt when they pray, so mm-hmm. what? Now that you know, with two or more gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. Faith mm-hmm. and examples. Like I said, sitting in a chair, faith. Mm-hmm. Turning the key for the car to start, faith. Because every time you turn that key on that car, it don't always start. Mm-hmm. But your right, faith right, is right, that right. it's going to start. You ain't going to start. I'm yeah. going to work. You don't go to you don't get in the car thinking, well, I ain't going to work. It's going to you're not going to say in your mind that the car not going to start before you turn the key. You don't do that. You get what I'm saying? So when you open the refrigerator, you expect to see food. Or you want to feel cold air coming out. I mean, these are things that we have faith in. You don't not do that. So it's the same thing with prayer. Okay. Trust. <laughs> I knocked the phone on the phone. Break my phone. But trust and believe that um, right. that's going to happen. Yeah. So it's really about just a, what did, um... What did Pastor say from um, uh, Apostle Wiggins? Wiggins. Mm-hmm. Apostle Wiggins. Don't let me mess up your name. He said you have to have a mouth style change. change yeah. Not a lifestyle change. He said a, a mouth, mouth style, style change. change. So, and even when you don't, mm-hmm. and even when that doubt sets in, I still think about that father with that daughter. Mm-hmm. And he said, God, I mean, Lord, help my unbelief mm-hmm. that's I don't know for the last what seven months that's been that's really just been sticking in my head Lord help my unbelief oh okay so you pray the prayer I got it okay okay, okay. yeah you pray the prayer when that doubt come in that it may happen Lord help my unbelief mm-hmm. because and God I thank you I speak those things that be mm-hmm. not a, as though they are Mm-hmm. I thank you for whatever that is coming into existence. Mm-hmm. Just, I'm going to use you as an example. My husband been wanting a truck for a long time. And for so many years, he's always put himself on the back burner because this child needed a car. That child was going to school. You know, whatever it may be. He put everybody up mm-hmm. for himself. He took our son. They went to a car by just looking around. He saw that truck. He was like, Daddy, that show is nice. You know, mm-hmm. and he was like, yeah, but putting himself on the back burner again, really wanting it, had prayed about it, mm-hmm. but just not right now. 
My son wouldn't let it go. He wouldn't let it go. Mm -hmm. Long story short, he came home, cleaned out the garage, made space. He got that truck. And it didn't hurt nothing. Mm -mm. It didn't you got to make mm. you, you gotta make room. space for your faith. Mm -hmm. Make space for your faith. Yeah. Make space for your faith. What that means is what you pray about, what you believe God for, then you start making space for whatever that thing is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 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 on point there. Because I really did not, I was going to talk myself out of getting that truck. Yeah. Because, number one, I had been riding around in whatever vehicle, it didn't matter. I'm going to tell you right now, it, as long as it's thought and the air work. Yeah. I don't know, that's all I need. Dents, all that kind of stuff, didn't matter to me as long as it was clean. I always kept my vehicles clean. Mm -hmm. But we had two vehicles sitting outside. Nobody was driving them at this point, and I really needed to get something because, one, she didn't want them out there no more. <laughs> she was like, they need to go because they just sitting out here. They worked, mm -hmm. and they were functional, but nobody was driving. The kids would start getting their own vehicles. Those were starter vehicles for them, and because I had took care of vehicles so long, and I, I hate to say this because it's probably embarrassing. I had that car 21 years. Uh, you know, and so that's, I don't know, maybe it's pretty That's bad. all right, it served its purpose. It served its purpose, but I sold it. It's but not like you had to make room. Make room. You had to make room. And I had another vehicle that I really loved because I wanted to, you know, like restore something, but I sold it because it really was time to move on. Hey, good baby, morning, good morning. Hi. Did you finish your hair? Mm -hmm. You did? We were asleep? Oh, I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> So I think that you know the 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 what we've talked about today has has added some layers, hopefully to your faith, mm -hmm. and also just uh, just really your mind. Right. When the enemy tries to tell you that this is not going to happen, mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus, say I rebuke you, and then you speak another word of faith over it. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you for protecting my prayer. That yeah. I've sold over my husband. Okay. Thank you for protecting my prayer that I've sold over my children, my mm -hmm. wife, my finances, my job. Okay. You know, thank you for protecting my prayer that I prayed over this person that treats me like crap. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That they will have a revelation mm -hmm. of love, seeing it in me because I'm putting up with it. Right. Knowing that, Father, it's a greater thing that can happen from this. Mm -hmm. But thank God for protecting your prayer because it gives you. It gives you more context about what you should be allowing to come in your head. Because the Bible says that once you pray and you believe and trust for God for something, mm -hmm. the devil comes immediately to pluck up the seed. Yes, so when we pray the prayer, and I, I don't get it, I guess I said I never say it over and over or repeat it. But when you pray that prayer, just know that he wants to come with a shovel to dig up the seed so it can never take root. Right. So that's why we want to protect the prayer. Mm -hmm. We want to keep steep, steep, speaking uh, words of faith over it. Mm -hmm. If our faith level is not where it is, then that could be another prayer, Lord, strengthen my faith. Mm -hmm. Because some of the things that I see that you're doing, I don't even acknowledge. So start acknowledging God for the small things that you know that he's doing. Because that's going to build up your faith. Because when they come a big thing, and I'm serious, and life will hit you in your face. When it come a big thing, when it's a surgery, mm -hmm. when it's a relocation to move from somewhere to mm -hmm. somewhere else, and you know you, I don't want to go, but you, 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 yeah. God, you going. I mean, God is, he put you on his path. Oh, I don't want to relocate, blah, blah, blah. You going. So all of these type of things, that's a different level. Mm -hmm. And that with that level come, come a different, more stronger devil. Right. Because... You are going to be planted in a space to do something mm -hmm. and to receive something. But if you don't protect the prayer, you don't get there. God give me mm -hmm. your strength and your wisdom during the waiting process. Amen. There you go. Because 
we don't like to wait. Mm -hmm. We press a button on the microwave of prayer and we want it right now. Right. But there's still things in us that needs to be uh, nurtured and built up and, and, and renewed in some areas and transformed. Mm -hmm. And so we, 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 we get tired. So pray for your strength. Pray for your stamina. It's so much to yeah. pray for. So I, I am excited about praise reports. So you need to be making sure that you let us know about some as soon as we get on on Saturday. Praise reports about what you experienced during the week. Right. My husband, my wife, our children, our finances, mm -hmm. a deal that we were brokering, whatever. I didn't get upset. I took a breath. Mm -hmm. I mean, I changed That's the way I responded. Mean. All of those things That's are positive. Because when the enemy looks at it, he just want to keep stirring up the pot. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're going to do. We're going to lead. We're going we're gonna to live by faith. Mm -hmm. We're going to speak the word into existence. We're going right. to stand on that. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're going to trust God for it. Stand, cultivate, and guard your ground and at because, all costs. And because, and because you're doing that, then the attacks sometimes become more fierce mm -hmm. and more fre frequent. There we go. Fierce and frequent will be the attacks. Yeah. So it's 8.52, Instagram, Facebook. We all, we're done. We're done. And so what I'm, what I'm going to do is, is, is thank you all for, we had awesome, awesome conversations today. Mm. Call me a conversation. So the thing is, we're about uplifting and elevating mm -hmm. each other, keeping each other strong, praying each other up, mm -hmm. you know, and most of all, engaging in victory when somebody else gets their prayers answered. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a big deal. It is. In rejoicing with other people. To see that their <coughs> faith <coughs> level it's just growing. Exactly. <clears throat> now, going back to last week, don't be denying that man. Don't be denying that wife. Yeah. When she wants you, you better stand up and get what you need to get. Because that was funny to me. But um, I just thought I'd say that. No denial. Pursuit. So, Pursuit. 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 And it can be both ways. Not just one way. Pursuit. 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 You married that person for a reason. Keep that so nice. Enjoy the fruits life. of your labor. Fruits I'm leaving that alone. Um, I'm going to ask you all to like the video, mm -hmm. share the video, whether it's on Instagram, Facebook, <clears throat> YouTube. Uh, go to our YouTube channel. Yeah. Subscribe. <clears throat> share with other people. Um, and again, it's all about elevating and uplifting healthy, godly marriages. Yes. That's all it's about. That's it. So, uh, we thank you. We love you all very much. Mm -hmm. And we will see you all next Saturday to discuss more marriage matters. Because your marriage matters. matters. All right. Y'all have, right, a, great have a great weekend. Oh, yeah. Oh. And if you're going to do, hey, we're going to have a financial meeting. So, remember what we talked about. Oh, yeah. You know, put time in to go over your finances with your spouse. Ooh, we're not at that level yet. Oh, well, then pray yeah. that you get to a place yeah. We all can have a meeting about mm -hmm. the finances because we need to be on the same page so we can get that stuff done. Yeah. Now, if you debt free, then you need to be calling me. Okay. Give us some tips. Tell us what something. we need to do. Yeah. Y'all yeah, have a great weekend. All right. Love you guys. Bye. How do I cook this? Oh, hit it. I got it. You. <laughs> Both of us going to have broken phones. No, oh. you say that. One thing I can say, these little covers work. It shared it to the store? You hit that. That's oh, what you hit. Goodness. That's what you hit. Well, you hit download.